What's good YouTube, it's White Mike, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to correct for those skin tones in Final Cut Pro. Let's get into it. All right, so to go ahead and correct those skin tones, let's jump into the Mac desktop here, open up the video editor, and then I'm gonna walk you through the process. Right, so the first thing you wanna do is open up Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna go and turn the browser window off here, turn on my effects window, and you see I have a clip loaded in the timeline. And the way I'm gonna correct for the skin tones, first thing I'm gonna do is add an effect for LUT. I'm gonna add that twice for custom LUT. And the reason I'm doing that is because one of my LUTs is gonna be my S-Log2 LUT and the other one's gonna be my creative LUT. You can also create adjustment layers if you prefer to do it that way, but since I just have one clip, this is the way I'm gonna do it. So the first LUT here, I'm gonna go to LUT and I have mine in a folder called Technical. And this is an S-Log2 LUT. So this is a ProRes file shot on the A7S2 in S-Log2. So this is gonna just convert it to Rec. 709. So this image is more of what you'd see coming straight out of a camera. So it looks really normal now. So the skin tones don't look too bad here, and the way we're gonna be able to tell is if we go to view video scopes, the video scopes pops up on the right side, and we can right click, and instead of waveform, we wanna check the vector scope, and we can see our vector scope here. So a vector scope is round, and it has different colors for the color wheel from yellow all the way back to orange, green, blue, magenta. You also have these little squares here, from my understanding, are just for broadcast saturation. So you don't wanna exceed those, but I'm not doing broadcast and I never look at those things, but I think that's what they're for. Then you have this line here. This line is for skin tones. So I can kind of see that my skin tone is here, but you also have all these other colors that are in the shot that are kind of distracting it. So the first thing I can show you is if you go into the color inspector, and let's just go to saturation, push the saturation all the way up. You can see how the colors all expand. You can see all the different colors that are in your video. Obviously, the shot is way oversaturated, but you see how it goes past these uh, little blocks. I believe that's what those are for, but the main thing we're looking at here is this skin tone line. So my skin tones are right on there, but they're also oversaturated. So the, the longer this is, the more saturation you have. So if I pull the saturation back, you see that it, it shrinks. So I'm just gonna reset that. So what I wanna do is isolate my skin tones so that I can only see my skin tones here. So what I'm gonna do is click the clip here, go back to the video inspector, and go to effects and we're gonna type in mask and I'm gonna drag a draw mask onto the clip and here I'm going to just with my pen tool that should be selected by default I'm gonna start drawing around my skin tone primarily the face is usually the easiest but if your shot doesn't have a face maybe it's just an arm or a leg or something just just do that one so I got a big portion of the skin on my face and it's isolated, so I'm not pulling in any background colors, no blues, pinks, purples, etc. And you can see that this is where my skin tone is. It's right on the skin tone line. So out of camera, it looks great. So you can see if I uncheck this, I've isolated my skin tone here on the skin tone line. And what I wanna do is actually gonna add a grade. So normally what happens is your skin tones, if your exposure is right in camera and your white balance are usually good. What throws them off is when you put a LUT on here. So I'm gonna put a creative LUT. This is a Daniel Schiffer Vista Cruiser LUT that I use on my videos. And it's gonna bring out the pinks and blues. So when I do that, you can see that the, the magentas and the blues are really saturated. And my skin tone is moved off of this line. So it's actually going towards a red magenta. And you can really see that here. So if I turn this on and off, you can see how the colors have moved. I like the grade I'm getting here, but I'm gonna push it back to about, I don't know, 50, 50%. Skin tones have gotten closer to the line, but they're still not on the line. So what I'm gonna do now is actually turn my mask on, and you can tell that it's not on the line yet. So the next thing I wanna do is go to the color inspector again, select where it says color board, and add a color wheels. And here we can adjust for our skin tone. So a lot of videos you'll see, they'll tell you to actually take the master and adjust it to get the skin tones right, but what you've done is you've actually shifted all those colors in the video. So what's the point of the LUT if you're just gonna shift all the colors? So you can see as I'm clicking it on and off that the colors have changed. What we wanna do is actually just isolate the skin tones. So I'm gonna double click that to reset it. And the way we're gonna isolate these skin tones is this mask icon here at the top right. Click that and do add color mask. Now find an area of the skin that is not touching any other colors. So a good big patch like on the cheek or the forehead, just click and start dragging. And you'll see that we're starting to isolate the skin tones here. So 
I can pull up until I get the portion that I want. Now, if I keep going further, it's gonna start selecting more colors that it touches, right? I can also look at my scope over here and see what colors I'm selecting. So I'm okay with something like this because those shadow areas on the face that aren't being selected, it's okay if I have a hint of those colors on the side of my face because I do have that type of lighting in the room, so that's okay. But if I wanted to get more of the skin, I could go here, but I'm also gonna be changing some of that background. So I'm gonna go to about here. And then I'm gonna go to softness down here at the bottom. This is kind of like a blur and you wanna put it up to around, I'm gonna put it around 50 or so. And that just kind of blurs the pixels together so it doesn't look crazy when you change the, the tones and things like that. And actually what I'm gonna do now is go back to the video inspector. I'm going to turn my mask back on so you can see my colors are not falling on that skin tone line. And I'm gonna go back to the color inspector and this time I'm gonna use the master and since I have this color mask, it's only going to affect the skin tones that I selected. So we want to actually go towards the oranges, yellow side. So I'm going to pull this towards the yellow and orange side. And you can see that it's on the line now. If you go too far, you're going to oversaturate it and you're going to look like an Oompa Loompa. So don't do that. So you just want to gradually move this so that that line is moving but staying at the same saturation level. Now if you want to saturate a little bit, you can drag it up. If you don't, you can drag it back down. I'm literally just going to make sure that my skin tones are on that line, so it's kind of in the middle here. So if we turn this on and off, you can see that we've changed our skin tone from that pink red to a nice good skin tone. Go back to my video inspector, turn my mask off, and you can see that if I turn the color wheel on and off, it's a very subtle change in this particular example, but there are other examples where your skin tones may be way off, but it still works. And you can see that my skin tones are now on this line. If I turn the color wheel off, they're not on the line. So that's how you would change your skin tones in Final Cut Pro. It's pretty straightforward. And this is the method that I've been using since I've started using Final Cut. All right, so that's how you correct for the skin tones in Final Cut Pro. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Any questions, etc. I'll get back to you. Hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, all that good stuff. I'm up to 137 subscribers now, so we've worked our way up about 13 subscribers since the last time. So, you know, I'll catch you in the next one, and that's a wrap.